close attention and listen very, very carefully. I want to talk to you today about a special, special book. Oh, Miss Lana, I understand you're talking about a book. That's right. Oh, I've got the book right here. Let me see if I can find it. It's a phone book. No, it's not a phone book. Oh, it's not? No. Um, oh, how about a comic book? No, it's not a comic book. Oh, um, a story book? No, it's not a story book. Mm. Oh, how about an appointment book? No, it's not an appointment book. Uh, a notebook? No. Pocket book? No. Cookbook? No. Oh, a can of tuna. Tuna? What does a can of tuna have to do with it? Well, well, all this reading is making me hungry. Oh, Postmaster Pendergrass. Well, well, you know what they say. You can tune a guitar, you can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. <laughs> oh, the special book I'm talking about today is the Bible. B is for Bible. The letter B. 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 The letter B. 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 The letter B. 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 Dennis, are you watching a scary movie again? Dennis. Dennis. I told you to quit watching that junk. It's not good for you. Oh, Mom, it's no big deal. You are more than a physical man, but inside you live spiritual sin, and you need to remember he's got to be fed to. Well, he don't eat candy, he don't eat cake, but he loves to chew on spiritual steak. And when you read God's Word, that is what you do. So read, read, read the Word and pray every day. I promise you, I promise you will grow. You gotta read, read, read. Read the word and pray every day. You will grow. You will grow. You will grow. You will grow. Well, the part of me you can't see is not as big as what's inside me. A superhero lives. Within my heart. So, words of faith are what I speak. And Sam stay strong and he won't get weak. And I will stop the devil's fiery darts. But you gotta read, 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 read the word and pray every day. And I promise you, I promise you will grow. You gotta read, read, read the word and pray every day And you will grow, you will grow
the name of it is the forest fire. The bear family was enjoying a quiet morning together. They were lounging in the bright sunshine just outside the door to their cave. Brindle Bear loved the feeling of the warm sun on his fur. He would lay on his back for a while, and then he'd roll over on his front for a while. He felt good all over. Suddenly, Brindle's nose smelled a strange smell. <laughs> the little bear turned this way and that to smell it better. Mama, Papa, what's that terrible smell? I don't like it at all. Mama and Papa had been taking a little nap in the sunlight. Now they were wide awake and sniffing the air. Mama Bear looked frightened. Papa, is it? Yes, Mama, it's a forest fire. Papa sniffed some more, and it smells like it's coming this way. By this time, Brindle and his brother Arliss were crowding closer to their mother. She reached out and put an arm around each one of them. Papa, what are we going to do, she asked. On the other side of this mountain is a wide river, and it's not very deep. And if we could cross that river, we would be safe, because the fire cannot cross a river that wide, Papa replied. Mama sniffed the air again. Papa, there's not much time. Look, the birds are already flying away. It's a long, long trip over the top of this mountain. You and I could make it, but Arliss and Brindle are too little. They wouldn't make it, and I can't leave them here. And she hugged them to herself. Papa was deep in thought. Suddenly, his face brightened. Don't worry, Mama. I know a way we can all make it. God just reminded me of a tunnel I discovered long ago. The entrance is not far from here. It looks like a cave now. It's all overgrown with trees, and a few rocks have fallen over the opening. We can pass through the tunnel and come out on the other side. Then all we have to do is walk down along the mountainside a short way and wade across the river. Mama Bear was so relieved. Oh, Papa, I knew you would figure out something. But Papa Bear was already headed down the path toward where the other animals live. Quick, everyone, tell as many of the animals as you can that we know a way to safety. If we don't tell them, they will surely die. Tell everyone to meet us at the cave as soon as they can. Mama, Arliss, and Brindle ran off into the forest to tell as many of their friends and neighbors at the good news that Papa knew a way to escape from the fire. The animals they told spread the news to the others, and within just a few minutes, all the forest creatures were crowded around the door to the bear's cave. Papa silenced the crowd. We must all move quickly, but there is no need to rush or push. We will be going through an old tunnel that leads to the other side of the mountain. Then we will cross a wide but shallow river. We will be safe there because the fire cannot cross the river. I will lead the way. Follow me. With that, Papa Bear went up the hill and all the animals followed him. They came to what looked like a cave and Papa went in. Even though it was very dark, all the animals followed him. They walked on and on, feeling their way along the wall of the tunnel. The floor was so smooth, so it was not hard even for the smallest bunny. Soon, Brenda was able to see a speck of light ahead. What's that, Papa? he asked. That's where we're headed, son, Papa Bear replied. That light will keep getting brighter and brighter until we reach the end of the tunnel. With the end of their journey in sight, the animals began to feel happy. They started to talk and to laugh, and before long, they could see the green trees in the sky outside the tunnel door. And soon, they were walking down the other side of the mountain toward the wide river. Every so often, Papa sniffed the air. On this side of the mountain, he could barely smell the smoke of the forest fire. Yet, he would not rest until he and his family and friends were safely on the other side. At last, they reached the banks of the river. It was as shallow as Papa Bear remembered. Only the smallest animal needed help crossing. These they put on the backs of the raccoons and the beavers. And once all the animals were safely across, they began to explore their new home. Look, said Mama Rabbit, I found a patch of wild carrots. Come, children, 
You have never tasted anything as delicious as this. Thank you, Mr. Bear, for saving our lives and bringing us to such a wonderful place. This tree will be just perfect for my nest, said Mrs. Squirrel. And look at all the nuts on the ground. There are more nuts than I have ever seen before. Oh, thank you, Mr. Bear, for bringing us here. Meanwhile, Brindle Bear had done some exploring of his own. And when he found what he was looking for, he didn't say a word. He just sat down in the blackberry patch and he ate until his tummy was you know what, boys and girls? God always has an escape, an escape for you and me when we need it. And if you will obey God's word and do as he asks you to do, you will always be safe. Remember, boys and girls, Psalm 119.17 says, I will obey thy word. Do you like to read books? You know, one of my favorite things to do is read books. Sometimes I like to read books that have really good stories. And then sometimes I like to read books that have really colorful pictures. But I have a book today that's the greatest and best book in the whole world. I want to show you this book. This book is called The Bible. And it says it's a holy Bible. You know why? Because the Bible is not any kind of an ordinary book. No siree. The Bible is holy because it's God's Word. It's God's Word and what God thinks about things. And I want to read you a scripture out of this Bible. Psalm 119.17, listen very closely, says, I will obey your word. Do you know if you want to be blessed in life and have good things happen to you, you need to not only read the Bible, but do what the Bible says. You see, some people, they try to read the Bible and understand it and get blessings, but it doesn't work for them. The Bible's just blank pages to those people. You know why? Because they haven't committed to obey what the Bible says. But whenever you decide to do what the Bible says to do and obey the Word of God, then life starts to make sense for you. The blessings of God start to come on you, and you'll be able to understand things better. And the more you obey the Word of God, the more you do what the Word of God says to do, Wow, your life just gets better and better and more colorful and you'll see things better and better and you'll be blessed in life. B is for Bible. And Psalm 119.17 says, I will obey your word. God's Word. Nope, never, ever, ever, never do I read the Word. Uh, everybody should read God's Word. Boys and girls, B is for the Bible. Well, I don't read it. I never have. Well, why not? Because, silly, I'm a puppy dog, and dogs can't read, sister. <laughs> well, let me read you a scripture Ooh. from the Bible. In Psalms 119.17, it says, I will obey your word. Oh, that reminds me of a story. One day, I was playing baseball. You know, wait a minute. Now, you said dogs couldn't read, and if they can't read, they can't play baseball either. Yes, they can if they walk on their hind legs like me. Uh, oh, go ahead. Anyway, my mama, she says, Parker Miss, come home for supper. Oh, what did you do? I said, not now, Mama. It's my turn to bet. <gasps> what did she say? She said, you better obey me, young man. The Bible tells you to obey your mama. If you don't obey me, you be in big trouble. Oh, and then what did you do then? The only thing I could do. My mama's read me that scripture since I was a little, little bitty puppy dog. When you obey your mama and daddy, you'll be blessed. Oh, that's good, Barkamaeus. Boys and girls, B is for Bible, and we should all obey the Word of God. B. Bible. To B. Uh-oh, we're about to visit a ferocious animal. It's the grizzly bear. Grizzly bears are among the most dangerous animals in North America. Although they eat fish and other small animals, grizzly bears will attack human beings. 
Grizzlies were called by the Indians the beasts who walk like people. Although they stand and walk on their hind legs, grizzlies can run on all fours up to 30 miles per hour. If you ever meet a grizzly in the wild, don't try to outrun it. You can't. Full-grown grizzlies weigh up to a thousand pounds. And these bears have long, straight claws. One swipe with a grizzly paw can easily kill a large animal. In fact, grizzlies have even used their claws to strip the tough bark from trees. What a critter! Grizzlies love water, and they're excellent swimmers. That's why a big part of their diet is fish. These bears are now very small in number and are found only in the wilds of Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, and north of the Canadian border. At one time, they ranged all the way from Canada to Mexico. Now, grizzly bears are much bigger than their cousins, the black bears, and grizzlies have humped shoulders. And finally, grizzlies have a dipped face, while their black bear cousins have long, straight noses. These bears definitely do not make good teddy bears, so don't ever try to hug one or ask him to sleep in your tent. If you're camping in bear country, put your food away from camp and high above the ground and in containers that the bear cannot reach. Remember, bears may not have good eyesight, but their sense of smell is very good, so keep a lid on your goodies. I'll be glad when Jesus returns because once again these bears will be peaceful. Then they'll be fun to play with. Ooh, howdy. I'm fishing for a number five today. And I'm going to catch one too. Because I know what I'm doing. <laughs> five! Oh, five! Come here, boy. Here, five. Five! Shh. Where are you, five? Shh, Nicodemus! Would you hush up? You're going to scare away all the numbers. Elmer, I'm looking for a number five. Have you seen one? Oh, Nicodemus, everybody knows you're not going to get a number five by calling for it. You got to fish for it. Is that right? Well, sure, that's right. Now, listen, that happens to be exactly what I'm fishing for, number five. So, just watch me. I know what I'm doing. This lake's plumb full of fives. <laughs> you think you'll catch one? I think so. Ooh, I hooked one. It's <laughs> a five. It's fighting like a five. Come on, we're pulling in. Whoa, I hope it's a five. Oh, Look at it. <laughs> what is it? It's number five. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. Five.
gift of his son If you receive him, you can come home Cause you were special Special When it comes to you Nobody else will do You were special Uniquely made by the Lord Created by the Father Special When it comes to you Nobody else will do Special, uniquely made by the Lord. Hi, boys and girls. Do you have trouble obeying your mom and dad? Obeying your teacher? Well, maybe obeying the Word of God? Well, <laughs> I want to tell you about my brand new drink that I just invented. I call it number five. That's one, two, three, four, five. It's called number five because it has five different juices in it that will cause you to be more obedient. All you have to do is take five teaspoons Number five every morning before you get up, and you will have no more trouble at all obeying. Silver, what are you doing? Well, I'm telling the boys and girls about my new obedient juice called Number Five. Just five teaspoons a day will give you the power to always obey. Well, here, Nick, you want to try some Number Five? No. Stop it. No. That's no. one. Two, three, no. four, five. No, stop it, no, stop it. No, you can't drink anything to make you more obedient. You can't? No, you obey because you love God and you want to keep his word. Psalms 119, 17 says, I will obey your word. Good, because this stuff tastes terrible. Here, try some, Nicodemus. No. You're not gonna believe how this tastes. Stop it, no, stop it, no, stop it, no, stop it. I'm Ryan Simon and I'm here today with a memory verse I want you to say. So yell it out and don't be shy. Go ahead, kids, give the word a try. Say Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Verse 17. Obey your word. I will obey your word. Say Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Verse 17. Verse 17. I will obey your word. I will obey your word. Say Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Verse 17. Obey your word. I will obey your word. I'm Ryman Simon, and yes, I heard you boys and girls speak the word. B is for Bible. I want you to say that with me. B is for Bible. The Bible is God's word, and I want to read you a really powerful scripture out of the word of God. Are you ready for this? Psalm 119, 17. Whoa! That is powerful stuff. Says this, I will obey your word. Woo! Man, I'll tell you what, boys and girls, the word of God is very, very powerful. And we're supposed to obey and do what the word of God says. But I've got some sad news for you. Nobody's ever done that. The Bible says we've all sometime in our life disobeyed the word of God. Maybe you didn't mind your mom and dad one time, or, or maybe you told a lie, or, or maybe you've done something else that's wrong. When you do bad things, that's called sin, and sin separates you from God. That's a bad place to be in, but I've got some good news for you. 
God sent somebody to help us with our sin. Not only to help us, but to take our sin away. And his name is Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God. And Jesus took your sins away when he died on the cross for you. Boy, that's good news. But it won't do you any good until you do what the Bible says. That's obey and ask Jesus into your heart. You see, when Jesus comes into your heart, he makes you a brand new person. And you need to ask Jesus in your heart if you've never done that. Would you like to do that right now? If you would, I want you to pray with me right now. Just close your eyes right there where you are and say what I say. You can ask Jesus into your heart and obey the word of God and he'll wash all your sins away. Let's pray right now. Say, God, I come to you in Jesus' name. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Make me a new person and wash all my sin away. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you pray that prayer with me and you really meant it, something miraculous and powerful just happened to you. You just asked Jesus, the Son of God, into your heart, and now the Bible says you're a new creature. You know why? Because you obey the Word of God. Oh, it feels so good to obey the Word of God. That's the Bible. B is for Bible, and the Bible is the Word of God. I can't believe we're out of time. Boys and girls, it's time to hand our letter back in to Postmaster Pendergrass so he can put it away. Here you go, Postmaster Pendergrass. Oh, oh, thank you, Miss Lana. And since you are so kind as to give me back my B, I have another B I would like for you to meet. Get her, B. Ah! Oh, Postmaster Pendergrass, you scared me. Oh, he won't bite, Miss Lana. He's an obedient bee. You see, he had to learn to obey as a little boy bee because he had one, two, three, four, five little bee brothers. Oh, Postmaster Pendergrass, say goodbye to the boys and girls. Oh, okay. We'll be seeing you. Get it? Be seeing? <laughs> oh. <laughs>